Oh, we are heading straight for them. The guys ramp it up by bringing it down. Oh, no! And our gunslingers finally get a bullet off the straight and narrow. That was What the incredible. heck happened? So far, Super Sonic Savage has completed one 8,000 feet sonic boom flyby. Well, that was 8,000 feet and it was 1.06 mark. That was nothing. But they're not done yet. This time, they're ramping it up by bringing it down. We are banking into position, getting to 2,000 feet elevation in order to do another supersonic pass. Sonic boom from 2,000 feet, well, that's a lot closer than 8,000, so it might do it. All right, we are accelerating. Mach 1, Mach 1.03. We are headed straight for the 2,000 feet at Mach 1.07. It seems so peaceful. Adam flying overhead at the speed of sound, and then... Wow, that was something. I call that a bullseye. <laughs> it's a classic sonic boom and a classic illustration of the difference between the speed of light and the speed of sound. You see the supersonic jet fly by in silence, then the sound moving at 761 miles per hour catches up. But the big question is, did it do any actual damage? Nothing. It's all intact. So it's a question of how low can you legally go? Like some kind of supersonic limbo dance, the guys bring it down one more notch. Right, here we go. We're commencing the 500-foot run. We're accelerating now. We got to see some broken glass. Hey, it just came over the horizon. 500 feet. Mach 1.0. Oh, we are headed straight for them. Uh, it doesn't feel like 500 feet, it feels like 50. Mach 1.05. Oh, I can pull you right there. This one's for the money. Oh, no! <laughs> wow! <laughs> that was loud. Really loud. But despite the powerful ground level experience, myth that a sonic boom equals shattered glass is looking busted. Not one single item of glassware was even splintered. No broken glass. Not looking good at this point. Not at this geographical point, but a few hundred feet away at base camp, the team make an interesting discovery. Hey, Pete. Hey, Jamie. What do you got? Well, what happened was on the 500-foot pass, the sonic boom ripped through this trailer, opened up all the cabinets, and came out right here on the skylight and blew it completely off. Yep, just like a popped up on a soda can. <laughs> Little known facts about flying with the Blue Angels number 32. The lowermost pocket of your flight suit is left unzipped so that you could put your used and sealed air sickness bags right there while you're flying. Want to see more? Log on to discovery.com slash mythbusters where we've put a director's cut of my entire flight with the Blue Angels for your enjoyment and my humiliation. Carrie, Grant, and Tori have ramped up their robot to superhuman speeds, but the sidearm action used to bend bullets in the movie just doesn't work in real life. Nothing, this is more fake film physics. Whoa, whoa, we can't go busting this myth yet. I mean, they did have a cool collection of customized guns. And special engraved bullets. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Maybe it's not just the sidearm flick that gives us the curving bullet. Exactly, maybe it's a function of altering the bullets and guns themselves that's giving the bullets that curve. Yeah, I mean, it seems logical. You change the surface of the bullet or its balance, that could affect the trajectory. Okay, but what about the gun? Well, the main thing that makes the bullet go straight is the rifling in the barrel. Yeah, the helical grooves cause the bullet to go into a self-stabilizing spiral. So, I guess the next step? Take the rifling out of the gun, alter the bullets, and see if we get a curve. So in their final bid to bend the bullet, Carrie takes on the task of smoothing out the gun barrel's rifling. That should do it. We have a smooth barrel. 
Meanwhile, Tori has been attempting to upset the bullet's finely balanced aerodynamics. Now, the three sets of bullets are done. The first set, I've changed just the aerodynamics of the bullet, and the way I've done that is I've taken a hacksaw and cut grooves along one side of the bullet. The other set, what I've done is I've changed the weight. And the way I've done this is I've drilled out half of the bullet and then I filled it with car body filler so that way it's unbalanced. Now finally, the third set of bullets, I've incorporated both where I've drilled out half the bullet. This way it is no longer balanced and it's no longer aerodynamic. And with the ammo altered and their gun barrel smooth, I gotta make some arrests. It's back to the South San Francisco Police Department. Oh, calling all cars. Can I get my bike back? Sorry. Inside the firing range, in order to capture the all-important high-speed camera shots, the team is reverting to a stationary shooting position. And first up, the team fires off a few shots with a regular gun and the altered bullet. But on each occasion, there was no bend to the bullet's flight path. But I think when we switch to the barrel that has no rifling, all bets are going to be off, and that bullet is going to do whatever it wants to. And from the very first test with a grooved bullet... Okay, grooved bullet, de-rifle gun. It's clear how important rifling is. Whoa! Look at how wild that bullet went without the rifling. Yep, one look at the first pane of paper, and you can see the bullet must have gone through sideways. That was <laughs> What the incredible. heck happened? But despite the head-over-heels flight, it still traced a straight line through the air. Look at that. It's a straight path. And no matter how the bullet is altered, grooved, unbalanced, and a combination of both, the result is the same every time. Whoa! <laughs> Look at how unstable the bullets are now that there's no rifling. Yeah, it's like going whoosh. But still, it's not curvy. No. It's clear that the massive forward momentum of a speeding bullet... Nah. Straight path. ...simply overrides any minor adjustments to its aerodynamics or balance. So it's looking like no matter what we do, physics are working against us. We cannot curve a bullet. Doesn't matter if the barrel's rifled or not. Doesn't matter if the bullets are altered or not. So this one's busted. 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 Next, the Blue Angel. Give it everything they've got and get some interesting results. I gotta go check it out. So our 500-foot pass did not break any glass. Nothing. What's going to happen now is I'm going to get in a chase plane and follow Ben as he begins to do lower and lower passes over our test site, also increasing his angle of attack to focus the sonic boom right on ground zero on our house. I swear, we are incredibly close. So without a single sign of the mythical glass-shattering result, the team is ramping it up with some fancy flying. This time we're coming in nose down at about five degrees. We think this might focus the boom a little bit more and give us what we want. There they are. Man, that's a rush. Before Jamie can get in and check the results, Ben blasts by twice more in quick succession. And this time, damage is definitely done. No window. I can see it from here. A broken window, but not exactly as per the myth. Oh, no. It blew the window out of its hole, but it didn't break it. The three rapid-fire, low-altitude, supersonic flybys have clearly had an effect. Uh, I'm the plot thickens. I broke the door. But the jury is still out on whether it will specifically break glass. I didn't break any of the glass, it knocked it down though. And that has got Jamie thinking. A sonic boom is just a pressure wave. You now we've created a lot of pressure waves on Mythbusters. We've put out fires with them, we've broken wine glasses, but on the other hand, we've tried to make people poop and we've tried to blow up cars with them. Those didn't work too well. Sometimes 
They just don't behave the way you expect, from reflections, from harmonics, from all sorts of subtle details that you only figure out out 